Hi, Peter Schiff again. This is Tuesday, May 12th, 2009. I just got back from New Brunswick, Canada, uh, where I delivered a speech there at an investment conference. And also, I had a speech yesterday at the Heart Asset Conference in New York, and I think I've seen uh, some snippets of that up on YouTube as my speeches often wind up there. Uh, anyway, wanted to comment today on some of the interesting things I'm reading about in the newspaper when I was when I was on the plane. I mean, first of all, you know, apparently uh, President Obama is looking to put together a a committee to study the cause of the financial crash to try to figure out why it happened. You know, this is typical of government activity where the government creates a problem and then they waste more money trying to study the problem and they come up with a preconceived conclusion. Now they're looking to try to get Sandra Day O'Connor to head this committee or maybe Paul Volcker. They don't need to waste their money on a committee. They can just read my book, Crash Proof, to find out the cause of the crash. They can go back and look at some of the videos I recorded in 2005 and 2006. They can read stuff on my website. And of course, I'm not the only one. Why don't they consult with the people who saw the crisis coming, who laid it out in advance? They can find out what caused the crash. Of course, this is going to be another exercise in, in PR or propaganda, just like the stress tests. The government already knows what this commission is going to conclude. They're going to waste a bunch of taxpayer money, and they're going to come to the erroneous conclusion that we had a financial crisis because we had a lack of government regulation, and the solution is more regulation. Again, this is more government nonsense. And talking about government nonsense, I mentioned this once before, but I guess we're getting closer to this now, this cash for clunkers plan, where the government is going to give a $4,500 tax credit for people to junk their cars and buy a new one. I mean, this is about one of the stupidest things we can do right now. Our economy is in trouble. Why do we want to encourage people? Why do we want to pay people to destroy perfectly good vehicles that work where they have no debt? They own these vehicles free and clear. Why should we give them $4,500 to destroy these vehicles and then borrow money to buy brand new vehicles? Many of those vehicles, of course, manufactured in other countries like Japan. This is complete nonsense. We, we, there's no reason to destroy these vehicles. They work. We can drive them. We need to put our resources to better use. What's the point of driving the trade deficit up higher and, and encouraging citizens who have no automobile debt right now to take on debt? You know, because in order to qualify for the credit, you have to have a car that's a, a certain number of years old, but it has to have been in continuous service for the past year. So you have to be using the car. Of course, that's to prevent people from just going to a junkyard and getting a car and turning it in for $4,500. But this whole thing is absurd. We don't want to encourage our citizens to go deeper into debt. We don't want to encourage our citizens to take on more debt. That is how we got under this problem. You know, in talking about debt, the government came out today and announced that the budget deficit for fiscal 2009 is going to be about $90 billion more than they first thought. Now this puts the deficit above $1.8 trillion. Now if I were a, a Las Vegas odds maker, I'd put the over-under on this deficit for 2009 at $2 trillion. And if I were going to bet on it, I'd take the over. You know, also, the government was revising their forecast on when the Social Security trust funds that don't actually exist, they're going to run out of money. And now they've claimed that we're going to run out of assets in the Social Security trust fund by 2037, which is five years sooner than they thought before. But the reality is the Social Security Trust Funds have no assets. They don't even exist. There's nothing in there. The only thing in the Social Security Trust Fund is a government bond. But that's the same thing as having no trust fund at all. That would be like me setting up a trust fund for myself. And so I write myself a check for a million dollars and put it in my trust fund. And I claim my uncashed check as an asset. This is nonsense. Government bonds are assets if I own them, but they're not an asset if the government owns them because it's also the government liability. The real key for Social Security is not when the trust funds run out of phony government bonds, but when does the Social Security trust fund begin paying out more money than it takes in? Right now, the government collects more in Social Security taxes than it spends in Social Security uh, payments. 
The date where that turns into a negative, where the Social Security surplus becomes a deficit, according to the government, is now 2017 or 2016, one year sooner than the 2017 they originally forecast. But of course, all these government forecasts are based on unrealistically rosy economic assumptions regarding growth and, and tax revenue. It'd be my guess that the Social Security uh, program runs a deficit a lot sooner than 2016, maybe 2012, which is right around the corner given that this is 2009. And what the problem there is, now the government is going to have to move into the market and sell bonds. You know, in the past, this, the deficit has been appeared smaller. We've made it smaller by using this Social Security Trust Fund to make the deficit seem smaller. But now, when Social Security itself runs a deficit, now the budget deficit is going to be increased by the Social Security deficit instead of shrunk by the Social Security surplus. And that is the real problem. That's when this gigantic Ponzi scheme really comes to an end. Because that's when the government has to admit there's not enough money. And either they have to dramatically increase Social Security taxes, which there's no way they're going to do, or dramatically reduce Social Security benefits. Of course, the latter would be preferable, especially if they can find a way of means testing the program. But we're going to be in serious trouble uh, on Social Security a lot sooner than they think. You know, also, another, you know, another story I read, again, the unintended consequences of government bailouts. There's a clothing manufacturer in Chicago, and I, and I forget the name of the company, but they manufacture uh, men's clothing. Apparently, they manufactured the tuxedo that Barack Obama wore, wore on his inauguration. But they've been in business for about 100 years, and now they're bankrupt. And Wells Fargo holds their loans. And apparently, the unions are protesting uh, the bankruptcy. They don't want Wells Fargo uh, to put the company in a bankruptcy. They want Wells Fargo to loan the company even more money so they can keep operating and run up even bigger losses. And they want to try to make sure that the company is not sold to somebody who will break it apart, but sold to somebody who will continue to operate it. But of course, they can't continue to operate it in its present form because that's why they're bankrupt. And of course, Wells Fargo isn't in the business of loaning money to people or companies that can't pay it back. Well, who knows? Maybe they are. Because the justification for all this by the labor unions is that Wells Fargo's got all this TARP money. And because they got all this money from the government, they have an obligation to make these loans to save these jobs. Now, we'll see how this story ends, but this is not what we want. We do not want government money you know, recycled through the banks, propping up failed business models. Now, look, I think we need to be able to manufacture clothing in this country. We need a textile industry. Unfortunately, we lost it. But we're not going to get it back by subsidizing inefficient manufacturers. We have to get to the heart of why they're inefficient in the first place, why these companies are going out of business. And they're going out of business because of high taxes, because of high uh, uh, regulations, excessive regulations, and unfortunately, because we lack the capital necessary to supply our workers with tools. We're not, we don't have enough savings to finance capital investments. And unfortunately, because we lack enough savings, we don't, you know, our wages are too high. So because of the fact that we've basically blown all of our savings, we can't be competitive now unless we have lower wages. But the unions are standing in the way of reduced wages, as are a lot of other government regulations. And of course, who knows how much money these companies are paying in taxes, in both income taxes and payroll taxes, and how much money they spend to be in compliant with all sorts of government rules. And again, how much money the companies have to waste on legal bills uh, because of excess of lawsuits that result from the system that we have. Those are the problems. But to simply try to force uh, Wells Fargo into making bad loans simply because they received government TARP money, again, this is a slippery slope. These are the unintended consequences when the government gets in and interferes and bails out one company now we're, we're, we're trying to bail out more. It's a system where two wrongs are constantly uh, used to make a right. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks again. Uh, don't forget to listen to my radio show tomorrow. I probably won't be another blog. I do Wall Street Unspun every Wednesday live at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific. Thanks a lot, everybody, and so long.